it's Helen Chorley from Property Sisters, joined by Alexandra Powell today to hear more about her story and strategy. Just before we get started, if you could click that like icon, comment on how you found this video. And if you hit the bell icon, you'll be updated anytime we post new videos and we're always putting new content on here. So welcome, Alexandra. Do you Thanks want to for having me, Helen. You want to give a kind of brief overview who you are and kind of what you do in property? Absolutely. So I'm Alexandra Powell or at Powell Properties on Instagram. Uh, I'm an architect and property developer originally from the coast of Greece and I'm now based in Staffordshire. I'm a mum to an almost three-year-old boy, Apollon. Uh, I run a design and construction business with my husband, Richard, and we specialize in uh, residential extensions and renovation. So we work with private clients and investors. Uh, we're super passionate about creating well-designed, high-quality houses that people are proud to call home. So whether it's for someone's forever home or a rental property, uh, we put so much effort into the design and the feel of the space uh, as if it was our own home. Super. And gosh, you wear so many kind of hats in the property world, but how did you actually get into property? So I have wanted to become an architect since I was a child. And um, I used to sort of draw floor plans and think about ways of creating windmills into houses and all sorts of things like that when I was young. Um, growing up in Athens, I had a deep appreciation for art, history and architecture. I love to travel. And it was actually during a trip to Paris uh, when I was about 15, when I made the decision to study architecture, and then that's the direction my life went into for the next sort of 10, 15 years. Um, but it was only after having my son and being on maternity leave that I started listening to property podcasts, reading books. Obviously, I started with things like Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and then I worked my way through self-development and property and finance books. It was all quite new to me, even though the concept of developing properties from a design point of view, was something that I did day in, day out. Um, so then I attended uh, some property education uh, with my husband. And when it was time for me to go back to work after 10 months of maternity, I just realized that that wasn't what I wanted anymore. And um, I got my first paycheck after the first month. That was the end of my honeymoon period of being back in the office. Um, and half my wage went to the nursery, half my wage went to the mortgage. I was left with like not a single pound in my bank account. And I thought this is not sustainable. I need to find um, not necessarily a passive income, but a different way of funding the lifestyle that we wanted to have. And um, so we could still travel and have a nice home and enjoy our life and do something that we felt was contributing and kind of creating something bigger than what we were doing at the time. Um, so my husband was already self-employed running our construction company. So I decided to quit my job and join him. We sold our house um, and we moved from Essex up to Staffordshire, which we had decided was going to be our investment area. Uh, we have family here. We had a nice support network so we could start. We took that pot of money from the house that we'd sold. It had been fully renovated. So we'd increased the value significantly and um, we rented which is a controversial sort of way of getting off the property ladder, but we used our capital to buy two properties at auction. We renovated them both. Uh, one was on Homes Under the Hammer. And um, yeah, the, the sort of two bed rentals and they were both money in, money out pretty much. So we were really, really happy with how the education that we'd learned was able to be applied and we could see the results straight away. So already that, rental income was covering most of our rent anyway and um, yeah we invest for long term and then we started getting more uh, and more clients approaches asking us if we'd renovate their properties so now it's a real balance for us of investing in our own portfolio but also helping other investors with their own projects right and homes under the hammer must have been fun tell us more about that one it really was. So our son was quite young, but he was super into property. He'd been to so many viewings. He'd seen so many sort of smelly houses and we thought it would be fun to include him. So um, Martin Roberts uh, had a soft spot for him and he definitely took the limelight with his little hammer. Um, and I'm glad that we did it as a family experience. Um, a couple of weeks after the initial filming, we went into lockdown. So that kind of changed the dynamics, but we did manage to get the refurbishment done within the budget 
and time frame that we'd hoped for. Um, and then, yeah, I had to do with the filming by myself for the reveal because of all the COVID restrictions, but the BBC were brilliant. The film crew was amazing. And uh, yeah, we, we had a great experience and I would recommend it to anyone. Um, it was really good fun. That's brilliant. Yeah, everybody check that out if you, if you get chance to. And, um, you know, as we said, you do so many things and there's, there's so many things you're juggling. How is it juggling being a mum and doing property? How do you manage that? Um, so for me, the secret sort of uh, superpower is outsourcing. I do have a lot of support and um, I do wear a lot of hats, but I need um, full time childcare. I have a cleaner. I have multiple virtual assistants. Obviously, within the construction team, we have multiple subcontractors who help us deliver the projects. Uh, we have another architect who works with us and supports me through this. I have a business partner that I source with. So for me, it's all about finding these collaborations and filling the gaps in everybody's sort of talents and interests. So we can't all be good at everything. Um, even though it seems on Instagram like some people are, I don't think it's true. Uh, we all have to find our strong points. I identified early on what I really enjoy and what I don't. And then I realized that other people have sort of the opposite um skills to myself so those are the kind of partnerships I've gone with uh, and it's similar like me and my husband we don't sort of tread on each other's toes our skills don't overlap very much so we have completely different roles and responsibilities in the business and that's what allows us to grow sustainably and do so many different things but at the heart of it it's that we love what we do with we just really enjoy it even the hard bits yeah, there's that quote, isn't there? Find something that you, you know you love to do and you never work a day in another day in your life. And it's not not quite no work. I'm not quite there yet. <laughs> <laughs> but but loving what you do definitely makes a difference. And I love, you know, that you talk about collaboration. It's a real theme whenever I'm talking to a property sister. You know, we we just approach or we seem to just approach everything with that real collaborative spirit. So that's really interesting to um to, to listen to. And so you've got a particular strategy that I've seen you talk about before. Maybe I can ask you about that, kind of your bungalow flips. Yeah, so this was kind of a result out of um, COVID and then the market going a little bit sort of crazy. With such a buoyant market, we found that it was a lot harder to find those buy-to-let deals that we were finding, you know, at the beginning of 2020. So we realized that instead of giving up you know, purchasing properties, we just had to switch our strategy to adapt to the fact that this was now a seller's market. So we became sellers uh, effectively. So basically the principles behind the bungalow flip strategy are that in our area, there's a decent amount of stock of really distressed bungalows. It's like a bit of a time warp, they're stuck in the 60s or 70s. Quite often they've had the same homeowners for decades. So they're really well looked after. They're just dated and need some, some cosmetic uh, work. We're also finding that there isn't much competition from other investors. There's virtually no competition from families and first time buyers. So it was much easier for us to get known to the estate agents for wanting these particular properties but also negotiating really good deals without much um, competition from other buyers. Um, so our target market is obviously retired couples and downsizers. As a result, a lot of these buyers um, are cash buyers because they're selling the family home to move into a smaller property, uh, but they're also willing to pay a premium for a property that's ready to move into and a premium to avoid an extensive refurbishment. Um, so, yeah, they're also not affected by the furlough scheme and all sorts of factors that just make the process much easier. Um, from a practical point of view, a bungalow being all on one level um, makes the refurbishment more straightforward. There's no stairs. The roof is huge. So as long as you don't have to reduce, uh, replace the roof, that's, um, you know, that, that, that makes the refurbishment not so, um, not so tricky usually. Uh, and then generally in the UK, we have an aging population. There are fewer and fewer bungalows being built every single year. And the supply just eat, isn't keeping up with the demand. So I knew that this was a strategy that was not only going to be COVID proof, but it was going to work across the UK and over years to come. And so, yeah, it's something that I encourage people to do. Obviously, the price point to get into bungalow flips is higher because generally they hold the value really well. They appreciate quicker than um 
houses do. Um, but I suppose the only downside to doing uh, the bungalow flips is it's really hard to find comparables. So when it comes to raising angel finance, for example, and you want to show your investor why you think this property is going to sell for a certain price, it's much harder to demonstrate it. So we lean heavily on the estate agent's experience, the waiting lists, what people are saying that they're looking for. And sometimes we go a bit wider with the radius that we look at for the comparables. And we sometimes pay surveyors to do a formal sort of written valuation. Right. That's brilliant. Yeah, but bungalows hold a special place in my heart because I always lived in a bungalow growing up. Um, in fact, I had stair envy growing up because all my friends had stairs and I really wanted stairs. But it's really funny now, like, I, I, I don't know, something I've gone back to. I just, I love everything on one level. So I've got a villa here in Malta and everything's on one level and it just feels so natural to me. So. I know, right? So I grew up in apartments. So in Greece, most people live in a flat and I love having everything in one level, but there you have the benefit at least of being higher up and having a nice view. But it was only when my, my baby turned about sort of one and he was moving around, crawling and starting to walk that I wish I didn't have stairs. <laughs> So I can also see the appeal of certain bungalows to families, but that's not our target market. You know, we we think of these properties um, as being personalized and future proofed for these couples that we imagine moving into them. So we'll make sure the garden is low maintenance. We'll make sure it's open plan and uh, the doors are wide and there's a walk in shower rather than a bath. And so they're, they're always adapted with the sort of future residents in mind. Yeah, there's an awful lot of thought you can clearly see has gone into that and the way the way you think about that. So so that's wonderful. And do you want to do more of that or is there other aspects of property you'd like to go into in the future? So we're on our sixth one now, and I don't think that we should be slowing down. So some of them have been sourced to investors and some of them we're doing ourselves um, and we sort of project manage uh, the, the process. Um, but I don't, I don't want to ever stop doing them. Maybe as the buy to let market recovers, we can get back into that. But I believe in diversity and doing lots of different things. So my goal, sort of my dream for the future, maybe the next year or two, is to start getting into small um, commercial to residential conversions and then kind of scale up from there to maybe new builds in the future. You just never know. There's so much inspiration in the Property Sisters group that um, I can just see a path for the future. That's the beautiful thing, isn't it? There's always somebody to ask and everybody's so generous and so helpful and, you know, always willing to offer, you know, advice and pointers and share kind of resources. And yeah, that's a beautiful thing about our community. Well, that's been lovely to chat to you, Alexandra. Thank you so much for giving us insight into to what you do, how you juggle all those things and just let people know how they can connect with you. So Instagram is the best place at Powell underscore properties, but I'm also on LinkedIn and Facebook. Um, but yeah, Instagram is always my favorite platform. Super. Thank you. And again, hit that like, give us some comments and click that bell icon. Thank you.